They say that stroke is the silent killer and where this may be true in some cases it doesn't necessarily have to be. Uh, if you're informed and you pay attention to the signs you might be able to save your own life. This is my story. Uh, I had a stroke in August of 2019. I had several signs that I was ignoring. Uh, swelling of the ankles, extreme blurry vision, was having yeah, weird stomach issues. Um, I was having a lot of headaches almost daily. So I was trying to go to college at the time, get a degree, and uh, my vision got so bad that I couldn't read the textbooks. So I went into my optician and he went through a series of tests and then he checked my optical nerve and he asked me if I had high blood pressure and I said yeah that I had uh, had blood, high blood pressure in the past uh, and he said well your optical nerve is very, very swollen. Uh, you need to go to the hospital right now. And so he had already dilated my eyes. And uh, so I went and got in my truck, and the hospital was about a mile away. And I went to the hospital, got to the emergency ward. And I'm one of those type of people that really does not like to go to the doctor if I don't have to. Don't like to have to take medicines. But I went in there, told them that my doctor had told me that, you know, I needed to be admitted uh, and checked for high blood pressure. So I went in there, I waited in the waiting room for a little while. They called me back. Uh, the first person I met, you know, wanted to take my readings. And he took my blood pressure. Now normal blood pressure is usually 120 over 80. Mine was 261 over 195. I probably should have been dead at that point, uh, but it had happened slowly over time and my body was used to it, so I, I got very, very lucky that I wasn't dead. So they admitted me into the emergency ward <coughs> and uh, they put me on an IV of some canister of medicine that was for high blood pressure to get my blood pressure down and they tried for a long time to get my blood pressure down I think it was hours honestly uh, at one point they wanted to take me in and do a scan on me. I forget what, what it was called, but basically I have to lie down and put my head in this machine and they scan me. And uh, then after that, they took me back to the emergency room and I remember going back to sleep at that point and the next thing I knew, I woke up in a room two days later. So after I'd, uh, so 
So after I'd woken up in the hospital, uh, I found out my kids were there. They'd come from out of state. And that um, the doctors had told him that they needed to be prepared to give up a kidney for me. Something I never would have agreed to had I been awake. Uh, luckily that never had to happen. Um, I, uh, the, the doctor brought in a piece of paper that, uh, had different pictures on it, like birds and stuff, and I had to, uh, tell them what they were. And the first time, I could do some of them, maybe most of them. A few days later, they did it again, and I, I think I was able to get them all. They wanted to make sure that my brain wasn't fried. Um, eating, I had to kind of relearn how to eat, and they were serving me blended food, so even the meat was blended up in a blender, and so uh, it took me a few days to to where they would allow me to eat regular food, probably a week. Um, and then my f physical therapist came in and made me get up and I had to go walk the halls. So I basically kind of had to learn, relearn how to walk. But I also found out later on that uh, the sooner I was able to walk, the sooner I was gonna get out of the hospital. So I started walking in the hallways uh, as much as I could. Um, a friend of mine from high school showed up in the hospital, that was nice. Um, and uh, people kinda held vigil over me. Uh, so they were doing it in shifts. And I got better every day. And eventually I was able to take a shower and what was kind of weird was every day it felt like I was in a different room when I would wake up and that wasn't even the case it was uh, my mind playing tricks on me and, uh, and actually that would go on even after I left the hospital uh, for a while um, eventually I got back on normal foods and I got moved into a different room for a couple of days and then I was released. Uh, then my healing journey began uh, at home I needed to rebuild my strength I had lost about 60 pounds um, and so my mom, she told me to start walking. And so I started walking between these two pillars in my backyard uh, while talking to people on the phone. And after that, uh, when days were colder, I'd walk back and forth in front of the TV in my living room. I was given I don't know, about 30 or so pills a day, and I still have to take those uh, to keep my blood pressure down. And now it is solid as far as being in the normal range, so that's good. Um, and 
now I walk up to four miles a day outside when the weather's good. Uh, one problem with taking some of these pills, uh, blood thinners make you cold. So when others are baking in the sun, I'm just perfectly fine. And when they've got the air conditioning on, I'm freezing, so I have to wear a jacket. Um, I have to take Lasix also, and that gives you dry mouth, and uh, so that kind of sucks. But I've kind of grown to, you know, accept it. And uh, so, anyway. I'm legally blind in both eyes. I have optical nerve damage. I have a mild heart damage, kidney damage. My feet are numb and on my right leg, it's numb all the way up, halfway up my thigh. Um, even with all that, I still consider myself pretty lucky. I've heard of other cases where people were injured much worse from stroke. So I'm hoping that this video gets to somebody who needs to hear this, that they should get themselves checked and, and continue to get themselves checked, make sure that their blood pressure is at the correct levels so that what happened to me does not happen to them. So I hope this video was helpful to you and uh, I thank you for watching.